2020 was an amazing year, not only for women's sports, but especially the WNBA. They were put on a platform and the whole world was able to see their magic and the things they can do on a court and off the court. It is their 25th anniversary and they are doing big things to celebrate. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's your thumb and let's get into it. The 25th anniversary campaign, Count It, is here to celebrate players of past and present and all the things they've done on and off the court and especially the barriers they've broken down to give women in sports a place on the court and off the court as well. This season they'll be having challenges and cups and all these events to celebrate those things as well. They'll have a 25 best moments of the WNBA which will go on throughout the length of the season and the thing that I'm most excited about that they're doing this season is they're changing up their jerseys and their balls to give more of a representation and a style of the WNBA. But the jerseys that I'm most excited about that the WNBA is bringing this season are the Rebel Edition jerseys. And these jerseys are to promote the social justice and equality campaigns that these teams are fighting for. My favorite jersey that I do have to say is the Washington Mystics. As you can see, their jerseys have that gold stripe on it. And in the gold stripe, the wording is the 19th Amendment, which is the women's right amendment in the U.S. Constitution. They also have the path, which is going across their jersey of that gold stripe, is the path that people normally walk when they march in Washington, D.C. to the National Mall. Like, how cool is that? You get to show that, yeah, we're here for women, but being in Washington, D.C., where that is the place where all laws, especially federal laws, happen, is such a big statement for them to make not only in their jerseys but also with the social justice and equality campaigns they have chosen. You've probably kind of figured out by now that the WNBA is a summer league and this summer the Olympics are happening and they are going to take a break from July 15th to August 11th to let athletes go participate in the Olympics but to keep fans interested after the Olympics the WNBA has put in place the Commissioner's Cup. Now this will take place mostly in the first half of the season as each team will have a designated 10 games which will provide them points to participate in the Commissioner's Cup. And at the end of everyone's 10 games, which will be before the Olympic break, the points will be counted and the two teams from each conference with the most points will play each other when the teams return from their Olympic break and the winner will be given the Commissioner's Cup as well as a money prize. And I think this is such a a great idea to keep fans interested after the WNBA takes almost a month break to celebrate the Olympics. This will not only keep fans interested, but it's another way for the WNBA to promote their social change and equality campaigns that they'll be promoting all season long. Because the WNBA has been promoting social justice change for many years now, and the 2020 season just put that on a different level as they dedicated the entire season to Breonna Taylor. And that is the thing that the WNBA is really truly known for and the change that they have helped implement years after years as players like Maya Moore who has been out for almost three years dedicating her time and work to social change within her community and around the world along with multiple other players who sat out the 2020 season to give their attention and put voices and attention towards the causes of social change needed in this country. Just in case you're sleeping on a rock and you did not see what happened with the WNBA in the 2020 season, let me help you out. Everyone knows the first thing people ask is who won last year and that would be the Seattle Storm. They beat the Las Vegas Aces in the WNBA final in the Wubble and IMG Academy. I gotta tell you who won all the WNBA awards for the last season because those are the things people argue about year after year after year. We have Asia Wilson who won MVP from the Las Vegas Aces. You probably should know who Asia Wilson is, especially if you're a basketball fan. She has her own statue at her alma mater, South Carolina University. Like, could you imagine having your own statue? Let me know down in the comments. The next award, sixth woman of the year, was given to Asia's teammate, Dierica Hamby. I cannot disagree with that. You cannot tell me she is not one of the best people to come off the bench and be on your team. If I was a GM, a coach, I would want her on mine personally. Defensive player of the year went to arguably one of the biggest names in the WNBA for the past 10 years, Candace Parker, who at the time she played for the Los Angeles Sparks, but now she has gone home to Chicago and plays with the Chicago Sky. 
Rookie of the Year was given to Crystal Dangerfield from the Minnesota Lynx. And if you know her story, it is such a good one. She wasn't drafted very high and she made her way up to the top and won Rookie of the Year on one of the arguably best teams in the WNBA history, Minnesota Lynx. And the final award given out last year was Coach of the Year to Cheryl Reeves, the coach of the Minnesota Lynx. And if you see that team play, they have done leaps and bounds last year and she was so deserving of it. I have three games that I definitely think you should watch this season. The first game you should watch is on June 5th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. It is the LA Sparks versus the Chicago Sky. Candace Parker finally comes back to LA. Her return, how will it be? I definitely think they're going to do one of those video tributes for her because she was still kind of is the face of the LA Sparks to this day. The next game I have for you is July 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ESPN2 and it is the Dallas Wings versus the Minnesota Leaks. This is going to be the last regular season match of arguably some of the best young talent in the WNBA. You have the top two picks of the 2021 NBA draft that came from the Dallas Wings playing against the last two rookie of the years playing for the Minnesota Lynx. It'll be their last matchup. It'll be the tiebreaker, the third game. The last game I have for you, you definitely need to watch is September 17th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Phoenix Mercury versus the Seattle Storm. This could possibly be the last regular season matchup of two of the biggest names in WNBA history. Sue Bird from the Seattle Storm versus Diana Taurasi of the Phoenix Mercury. They are the two most notable quotable names in the WNBA and as their careers are very rich and historic no one would be surprised if this could possibly be their last years yes they could come back but I feel like in this time and age with the things we've gone on especially in sports you know give your superstars their flowers while they can still smell them. All these games can also be seen through the WNBA League Pass that is only $17. The link is in the description and when you watch the WNBA games this season, take a photo, post it on your Instagram shorts, and use the hashtag join the convo and tag me at her sports convo so I can see it and share you because that is what we need to see to grow this women's game. It's going to be the biggest season in WNBA history. Go on ahead and put on all your orange gear, support your favorite team, and let me know in the comments down below who that is. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below to be notified every time I post a new video, which is Monday and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's your choice to let me know how you feel about this and if you want more videos just like this. And always remember, don't be afraid to join the combo. The next award was given to AJ's teammate, Dierica Smith, Dierica Marie, Dierica Hamby. I literally called her five different names. <laughs>